The Last Farmer is what you get when you throw together 2013's version of Rust and Farming Simulator 2008 without all its bells and whistles, smash it with a hammer and chuck it in a blender. Really? No. Not really. But that won't give you the full picture. So Sam is from the beta network here and our goal is to save you time and money by answering the question, should you play The Last Farmer? All right, before we get started, full transparency. Midnight Games sent me this game for review via Keymailer. I'm going to do my best to be objective, but it's always good to keep that in mind. Now, onto the review. So this intro is absolutely killer. A monologue depicts a world in ruin where fighting is the only path to survival. You've heard this setup before, but with the voice actor's solid delivery, I'll create a place where warmth and comfort can be found again. A place I can proudly call home. It is still quite intriguing. This comic book style of visual storytelling is a great way to kick things off and is quite tense. It's a shame that there isn't more of it throughout, though this is a very story light adventure, which is pretty typical of this style of survival game. Most of the narrative can be found in the brief moments when you meet other survivors or when the main character speaks his thoughts aloud as he trudges through the desert wasteland. The Last Farmer is very much a self-driven title. There are a few hints and clues as to what needs to be done, such as a note left on a wall or a question mark on a map, but the game never really pushes you to do anything. You go at your own pace, and I absolutely adore that. I love it. Although you do have the core survival mechanics to watch out for. You know the ones, tiredness, hunger, thirst, and of course, health. As long as you keep those up, how you proceed forward is more or less up to you. However, this is also the reason why it took me much longer to get the car running than it should have. Admittedly, I missed a key note that explains where to find the engine, which was a little annoying, but nobody ever accused me of being a master detective. I'm more of a wander around aimlessly and hope for the best kind of player. Apparently, my brain decided to join me on that adventure. So diving into the core gameplay, The Last Farmer is pretty simple. Key components such as gathering resources, crafting tools and equipment, and building structures are here and are relatively straightforward. You can craft very basic stone tools in the beginning to help you on your way, but to create more advanced equipment, you are required to find blueprints. Unlike many other survival games, you won't find an abundance of resources in the forms of trees to chop down and stone to mine. Most resources are found by by breaking down furniture in deserted buildings that you can find scattered around the map. Now, I know this isn't the most groundbreaking feature out there, but I appreciated this outside the box thinking. The farming elements of the game follow a similar pattern to crafting, creating planter boxes and then scavenging for resources, or in this case, seeds to plant and grow. There are a few awesome components to the farming. It is based on a risk reward system. Crops obviously take time to grow and will be spoiled if not harvested within a certain time frame. So the gamble is whether you wait for your crops to yield before exploring or take a chance and go on an adventure whilst they are growing. The game does give you a timer to show how long the crops will take, which makes this risk slightly more manageable. However, it didn't stop my poor farming skills from being exposed with the amount of times I returned to base to find my fruit and veg had gone rotten. This small challenge makes planning out your trips into the wasteland even more important, and I really dig that. Another great aspect of farming is that crops don't only yield fruit and veg, but also some seeds to replant. This was super helpful, as I didn't have to run into the wilderness after every harvest to find more seeds. Also, if you're gone from your base for too long, don't be surprised if you return to broken planter boxes. For some reason, zombies take a liking to destroying your harvest. so. Repairing and maintaining your planter boxes is absolutely necessary. But why is farming so important? I heard nobody ask. Well, apparently those carrots and apples you're hoarding aren't just for snacking. They're like the currency of the apocalypse or something. And yet, they keep you alive and all that jazz. But who cares about that when you can trade a potato for a shotgun? Am I right? Got something that might interest you. <laughs> Many of the merchants throughout the game will look to trade with you. 
Well, duh. With the formal currency being reminiscent of the Fallout games. In other words, bottle caps. However, they will happily take a certain amount of crop off your hands in exchange for vital resources to create higher quality equipment. Okay, so maybe peaceful isn't the first word that comes to mind when describing the last farmer. Sure, you can plant carrots and craft a mean axe, but this post-apocalyptic paradise comes with a catch. Zombies that crave more than just brains and scavengers who think that camo pants and a rusty rifle qualify them as military personnel. We'll come here once every three days to collect our payment in food. If you refuse, you'll have serious problems. A few moments later. Whether you're back at base or out on the road seeking out resources, these constant threats are there to keep you on your toes. But how does it actually feel to come face to face with these infected? Well, the experience of confronting them is jarring, to say the least. Whether I chose to engage them with firearms from afar, or with a melee weapon up close, the interactions felt clunky and unsatisfying. In close combat, their clumsy attacks make it impossible to judge their range, and I somehow took damage even when they missed. Even when they missed? Holy Look at all this damage! Repeated blows were necessary to bring them down, and even then, they wouldn't react or flinch, simply absorbing the punishment until eventually collapsing. This lack of feedback and responsiveness made each encounter feel more like a chore than a thrilling fight for survival. Unfortunately, firearms proved to be just as unreliable. The gunfights lacked any real sense of impact. To make matters worse, the bullets seemed to have a mind of their own, scattering haphazardly regardless of whether I was hip firing or aiming down the sights. Given the scarcity of ammunition in the wasteland, these encounters became more exercises in frustration than intense and gripping battles. The last farmer clearly wasn't made with a blockbuster budget, and its visuals reflect that. That's, that's gross. The graphics are rough around the edges, and the environments, while atmospheric, are somewhat bland. The biggest issue is the game's frustrating approach to traversal. Fuel is extremely limited, which makes exploring the vast open world a chore. Constantly running out of gas and having to search for more disrupts the flow of gameplay and detracts from the overall experience. While survival games need to limit resources as part of creating tension, the scarcity of fuel in The Last Farmer feels excessive and makes exploration exploration more tedious than challenging. I'm a sucker for indie survival games, even with their quirks and rough edges. But even the jankiest gems need a certain level of polish to shine. Unfortunately, The Last Farmer feels more like an early access title than a finished product. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. What's more concerning is the developer's track record. Geekon seems to be churning out games at an alarming rate, nine in the last year alone. This raises red flags about potential asset recycling and a focus on quantity over quality, especially since all their games have a similar price point. Now, I'm not saying The Last Farmer is a bad game, but it's worth being cautious. There's a risk that it might not receive the long-term support and updates it needs to truly flourish. Consider this a friendly heads up before you invest your hard-earned cash. The Last Farmer offers a unique twist on the survival genre, with an interesting focus on dedicated resource runs rather than simply gathering materials on the fly. However, the game is held back by its rough edges. Clunky combat and a general lack of polish detract from the overall enjoyment. While the crafting and resource management systems are engaging, the gameplay experience can feel somewhat unrefined. Whilst the smaller price tag might be tempting, The Last Farmer feels appropriately priced at $12.99 US. The game is not terrible for a small indie title, but its significant drawbacks should make you cautious before parting with your hard-earned cash.